Hi everyone, want to uh, answer some of the questions about uh, radical Islamism. I'll, I'll refer to the uh, ideology uh, that we're discussing as, as radical Islamism, uh, mostly to, uh, as it does in the book, right, mostly to uh, distinguish it between a couple of other uh, things that are going to have a name that sounds fairly similar. Uh, so, so first of all, of course, you have Islam, which is a, a religion. Um, it talks in the book about the, the division, uh, the major division of Islam into uh, Sunni and Shia, but of course there's many more uh, divisions uh, below that as, as well, um, as, as is the case in other major world religions. Um, think of, you know, think of uh, in Christianity, right, you've got East, Eastern Orthodoxy and, and, and you've got Catholicism, um, and then from Catholicism you have also Protestantism, uh, which breaks away from Western Western Catholicism, and then and then you know Protestantism itself is broken into many branches, right? So that's uh, that's Islam, which is uh, the religion like Christianity or Judaism or or Hinduism or any other uh, well major world religion. Uh, then we've got Islamism, <clears throat> and and Islamism is the the political, uh, the, the sort of. The, like a, a political movement, I suppose, quite a broad political movement within Islamism. There's, of course, many different uh, political parties, uh, different political groups that that, that vary uh, on the whole, that vary on their level, or on what they're uh, sort of interested in uh, instituting into a, into a state. You know, a, hey, if you elect us, uh, this is what we'll do, right? And, and, and so Islamist parties exist uh, in, in Tunisia, in Algeria, all across North Africa, uh, in the Middle East. Uh, and into uh, well, all the way over to, uh, to to Indonesia, right throughout the whole uh, Muslim world. Uh, there's Islamist parties, and of course, uh, different Islamist parties have different ideas and different uh, methods, I suppose, as well of of of, of, um, of gaining political power and 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 putting in place policies that they that they would like to see. Which, on the whole, for Islamists. Right, which generally speaking across the, that fairly wide range of, of political parties, generally what Islamists want to do is they want to institute uh, uh, Islamic values and Islamic uh, law into state law. Uh, okay. Uh, we have a, the Muslim Brotherhood, I think, is the most famous sort of Islamist group. Uh, in terms of uh, maybe more mainstream Islamism, it was one of the earlier ones that was uh, that was formed. And so, uh, if you remember a few years ago with the Arab Spring, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood doing quite well in in Egyptian elections uh, at first, uh, and then being thrown out of power uh, very quickly afterwards by secularists. Um, and so, it, it, you know, and 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 historically, at least, and and. There's less of a case for this uh, currently, but historically, you know, we have had uh, similar sort of in in the West, right? In in Europe, uh, mostly in Europe, I, I guess, with Christian parties, right? Christian Democratic parties, uh, that sort of thing. Who uh, even in in the UK, where we don't have a Christian Democrat party like they do in in, in Germany, for example, but you know, in, in much of sort of Central and Northern Europe, you have those Christian Democrat parties. We don't have a party that's called that, but even the Conservative Party, the Centre Right Party, was for a long time traditionally, and and, and I suppose on, on some level, but probably much lesser level these days, is uh, has a, a strong association, right, with the Church of England, with with Protestantism, uh, that particular um, that particular. I forgot what the name of of it is now. That uh, ah, anyway, that that brand of that brand is, is not the word that I was looking for, but that that brand of Protestantism. What's the word where you have different denominations? That's it, different denominations. All right, so, um, you know, yeah, you've had that in the past. You've had sort of Christian parties. Um, the other thing that we've encountered already in the West, right, in terms of uh, comparisons here, are um, we, we talked about the reactionaries, we talked about Joseph de Mestre, right, who, uh, one of the things, and we talked about this in class a long, it feels like a long time ago, like another life now when we were all together in, in class. But uh, we talked about jo Joseph de Mestre and his um, sort of central part of his ideology, his uh, sort of conservative uh, reactionary ideology uh, was this uh, sort of a, a, a lament lamentation on the, on the decline of the importance of the, of the church in France, right? the Catholic church in France. You know, the throne and the altar, what majesty, what, you know, 
uh, pe people don't want to be ruled by somebody like them. They want to be ruled by somebody that's been anointed and chosen by God, separate from them, set apart from them. Uh, and so we, we have that sort of um, holding on to religion. When we think of the present day, uh, when I said holding on to religion, it made me think of that quote that was recently in American politics being bandied around. Was it by President Obama at the time, right? You know, holding on to the Bible and the guns, or was it somebody else? I think on the liberal side, right? Uh, spoken, spoken of it derogatorily. Uh, but we have it in the United States, we have, absolutely have a, a sort of a Christian right. Um, maybe we have a Christian left too, but it's not as, uh, not as famous. Uh, but we have this sort of Christian right as well that, that is involved in politics, uh, probably the politics of the, of the Republican Party. Um, uh, and so, yeah, so, so, so Islamism, uh, generally speaking, broadly speaking, is the application of Islamic values and the Islamic religion into politics, into the running and government of, 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 of a state that was uh, much more prevalent in, in the West's past than it is now, but still uh, we have that, so we have something to compare it to. Um, and then what, we're, what I think we're mostly concentrating, I suppose, in this chapter is, is this radical is Islamism. Um, and, and all we're really going to do there is sort of distinguish between sort of mainstream Islamism that I've just been talking about and radical Islamism is to say that radical Islamists uh, are going to use violence as a key, uh, a key strategy in their uh, attempts to gain political power and political uh, influence in the countries that, where, where they live. Uh, we'll see in a second right, how that violence might be uh, directed against other Muslims, oftentimes uh, Muslims who they, they, they for the radical Islamists, uh, not Muslim enough. Uh, they are oftentimes the, the biggest uh, target of that violence, uh, but also, um, you know, the West. And, and, and you know, it, it, we uh, see the impact of it mostly in, 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 in the West in, in sort of attacks against uh, U.S. interests, uh, certainly 9-11, uh, but, but, but not just in the United States, also in, in Britain, for example, where I'm from. Uh, in uh, in Manchester, right in in London, uh, and, and across Europe, right. So that's that's also uh, where, where we where we see again radical Islamists. So uh, of course, not all um, we should sort of start at the beginning. Not not all Muslims are Islamists. Not all Islamists are, are sort of radical Islamist terrorists. But there are there is a subsection of Islam Islamism that does uh, engage in that, and that's uh, that's what we're talking about. Uh, mostly, although I think I'll talk quite a bit about Islamism as well, as I already have, uh, more generally. So let's look and see what we've got here. Islamism. So uh, we've got four questions that I'll, that I'll sort of focus on, and I'll try and uh, include as much sort of detail as I can. I'm taking a lot of what I'm, what I'm getting from, from, from the uh, textbook, and so uh, it's a good place to be. Does radical Islamism follow any specific form of economic model that is adherent uh, in adherent with their goals like liberalism and socialism does I do sorry and I found this question really difficult uh, to think about actually because when, whenever I think about economic uh, models I think of capitalism versus socialism right centrally planned versus a capitalist liberal open economy a market economy perhaps um, which is sort of seems to be for the last you know 50 years the last 70 years uh, well, probably longer than that, right? Last 150 years uh, in the West, in, in, in the vast majority of the world, in fact, that seems to have been the, the decision, right? Between those two, right? Between liberal capitalism and socialist planned economy, publicly owned uh, means of production and that sort of thing for socialism. Uh, and that's, that's been true. And I said in the West, and, I, and then I said much of the world, but, but if we look at the Muslim world, it, it's, it's still been the main decision. Uh, if we go back to the 1950s uh, with, uh, with Egypt, right, and, and Egypt did quite a good job of, of sort of uh, playing off the Soviet Union and the United States and sort of edging more towards either socialist planned economy or, or more liberal economy in order to um, gain favor with each of those superpowers. Uh, you know, Iraq, uh, Saddam Hussein, the, uh, the, the, the Ba'ath Party, they were, they were socialists as well. Um, now, the, the problem, the, what I'm trying to sort of indicate here is in, in the Muslim world, right, the, as much as anywhere else probably, right, the choice seems to be between sort of liberalism and, and socialism. But of course, Islamism does, re, does reject both of those, uh, vehemently uh, rejects liberalism and socialism. 
uh, as ideologies, as political ideologies. And so uh, what sort of economic ideology uh, does, uh, does Islamism have, radical Islamism or, or even normal Islamism? You know, and there might be some more moderate Islamist parties that would adopt uh, maybe a more liberal economy, perhaps. But uh, although I don't know the answer, <laughs> I'm saying all this because I, I don't know the specific answer to this question. Uh, so it's a good one. It's something that be interesting. I'd be interested in looking into a little bit further, I suppose. Um, but certainly, right, the, the the sort of easy answer should be okay. A a a a, a an economic model that's consistent with, with the Quran. So one of the things that we often hear about is usury, uh, which is illegal in, well, um, I think in all the major religions, uh, the says, says uh, outlaws uh, usury, but uh, Islam certainly does. And, uh, and so, you know, in terms of having, um, you know, capital uh, finance, uh, you know, lending money uh, for interest, uh, that's, that, that wouldn't be. And so that, that's quite a huge uh, fundamental part of an economic policy, right, that would have to be uh, adjusted in probably all of the, the countries that, where Islamism has a chance of, of even uh, becoming. Um, uh, sort of holding sway, although as they say that, you know, the reason that I lose my fluency a bit is that, is that Turkey is coming to my mind, right? And so when we think of Turkey, um, Turkey is a fairly modern, well, extremely modern uh, economy and an important economy and that, uh, and its economic structure doesn't look that much different from other countries around the world. Uh, it says in the book that they, they're sort of undoing some of the secularization that took place in Turkey uh, at the end of the Ottoman Empire, sort of the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century when the Ottoman Empire, perhaps the last caliphate, uh, ended. Uh, the way it ended was that the, you know, the, the young Turks, Ataturk and, and, and his people, they, uh, they secularized, right? They tried to make Turkey look like Western Europe, right? Look like France or look like Britain, I suppose. Uh, and, and a lot of that was to get rid of a lot of the Islamic uh, customs as Islamic influence in their constitution and replace it with a, a nationalist uh, liberal economy uh, uh, and so uh, we see now that the current uh, regime in Turkey is maybe taking it back the other way towards Islamism but, but you know economically what are they doing it's worth looking at uh, it doesn't seem to me I'm not a Turkey expert but from what I do see it doesn't seem to me like they are uh, and making radical economic changes more than they're making sort of more radical social changes. Um, and so that's a, that's a good question that I, that I don't know the answer to and that, that, you know, um, I, and specifically I've only really talked about Islamism there rather than radical Islamism. So what, what I know about ISIS, for example, is that they they were, uh, they did provide social services to the, to the people in the, in the cities that they were, uh, occupying right where they were uh, Hamas do a similar thing uh, who you would also have to uh, think of I think as actually I guess I don't know so, so much about Hamas's goals other than you know to, to you know Palestinian uh, liberation so I don't know if they're Islamists or not I think they they are but they um, they they also provide uh, along with ISIS you know uh, I've been interested in providing social services you know food, food kitchens um uh you know even unemployment assistance and that sort of thing for people that are living in the in the city so there is some sort of a social responsibility aspect uh, to islamism and to islamist uh and to radical islamism uh, i'm talking about isis here right the most radical crowd probably <coughs> so i know all those sorts of elements uh, certainly they have taxes, right? And they have that special tax, which used to be paid in the Ottoman Empire, right? Until, uh, you know, just a hundred and so years ago. A uh, special tax paid by Christians or, or people who are not uh, Muslims. Oftentimes it, were, it was Christians because of the, the sort of geographic scope. Uh, but sort of a, a tax that you would pay if you weren't uh, a Muslim. Uh, extra tax. 
but uh, those are sort of the, 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 the that's probably the, all I know about radical Islamism and the economic policy or the economic models. Um, certainly, you know, and so just to sum it up really quickly, right, a rejection of uh, usury, right, so that, that's a big, uh, you know, a big change from our financial model, uh, our financing model. Um, you know, a belief in social services and taking care of your own people, uh, and also a belief in maybe charging people who are not your own people uh, tax, right? Uh, and, and that's that's all I really know uh, about that. It doesn't get into it too much in the book uh, at all. But next one. Uh, so thank you for the question. Good one. How, how has radical Islamism been misrepresented as an as the, as the entirety of Islam, and how has that impacted American politics? <clears throat> I think that's another. That's that's. That's definitely happened. Uh, certainly, radical Islamism, uh, and that's that's kind of why I, why I started where I want where I did start because I wanted to really differentiate. Uh, the Sunni Islam is, I think, the second biggest sort of religious grouping in the world as far as uh, you know, sort of demographers uh, when they're counting. Uh, Catholicism, the Catholic Church, has maybe a a couple of billion people and, and, and Sunni Islam has about a billion or so people. So very, very large, you know, a lot of people in there. And so the same, in, in the same way that it would be diff difficult to sort of characterize all um, Protestant Christians or all Catholics uh, in a certain way, of course, it's, of course it's impossible and unhelpful and, and you know, not really, uh, doesn't really tell us anything to try and categorize, you know, a billion uh, Muslims in, 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 in any particular way, right? Especially as what we said at the beginning, right? There's different denominations of Islam in the same way there's different denominations of Christianity. Uh, and even then within those de uh, denominations, of course, there's, there's people who are much more uh, adherent one way or the other. I remember uh, I spent some time in Macedonia where there's quite a lot of uh, ethnic Albanians that live there who are mostly Muslim. And I remember uh, being out with one one time and I, I I was, I was being, in, I suppose, insensitive uh, religiously. I wasn't really thinking about religion at the time. We were sat there eating at a cafe. He'd, uh, he'd, he'd, uh, he was a, he was a tailor. He just made me a, just made me a couple of suits, uh, handmade suits, really nice, um, uh, in sort of the textile center of Macedonia. And we'd gone out for, for lunch afterwards and we were talking. He was asking, we were talking about food and he was asking me about America. You know, what's the food like in America? What sort of American foods are you, are you interested in? <clears throat> Again, this is where the insensitivity came. I mean, I wasn't even thinking about when I started talking about barbecue, you know, the ribs and that sort of thing. And then he says, I said, have you ever had it? And he's like, no, no, of course not. It's, it's pork. And I was like, oh, yeah, oh, no. I'm so sorry. What was I thinking? And I was like, oh, so, you, you know, you don't drink either. No, 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 I drink. Uh, and so there's, there's different, uh, you know, different people obviously will have different um, levels of commitment to different parts of, 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 of the religion. Um, it's certainly uh, the case that there are radical Islamists, right? And, and this is not a tiny minority. It's, 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 I think, a minority. I think it says in the book, right? And, and I used to teach another class. Uh, I haven't taught it for a while, but called uh, Religion and International Politics. And so we do uh, sort of a, a week on each religion, uh, major religion, maybe Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, uh, Islam, uh, Judaism. Um, uh, and <coughs> I think when I was doing that, <coughs> I think I found a graphic that was about 10% uh, maybe. In some countries up to 10% or, or, or even one, you know, Five percent, but you know so, some some very large countries. But but even if five percent of the country is, is is sort of a supporter of radical Islamism, that's still millions of millions of people. And so uh, it's not that there's no radical radical Islamists out there, but certainly to characterise the whole of of Islam uh, as radical Islamists is is is, is much too um, again unhelpful and not not realistic either. Uh, so. Yeah, misrepresent this entirety of Islam, but it certainly has, you know, of course, uh, when, when does Islam get in the, in the news? It, it, it's, it's almost, you know, when it makes the major news, when there's major breaking news stories uh, involving uh, Islam or Muslims, it's, it's, it's recently, at least in the past, uh, you know, 20 years, 
it's been connected with ISIS or Al-Qaeda before them or, or other uh, extremist Islamists. Uh, although we did have the, uh, the Arab Spring, um, during which some Islam Islamist parties came to power, um, that we did see in a positive light, I think. Um, and so there is that balance as well, right? The, but, but yeah, it's, uh, I absolutely uh, sympathize with the question and I say, yes. Uh, uh, and how has it impacted American politics? Uh, I wouldn't like to hazard a guess at that, actually. I'm not, I'm not much of a, an American politics. Uh, uh, that's not, not been my concentration, really. So uh, I don't know. Of course, I, I see probably what you see. Um, but I don't know. Uh, we'll move on to the third question. Will the end of radical Islamism and terrorism come when Islam as a whole is widely reformed? Or can Islam find a peaceful place in the West? with their largest backers being fundamentalist states like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Sudan. And I think this is the important, or an important moment in, in Islamism, if you like, an important uh, point that, that's being made here. Uh, and something important to consider, right, is that uh, from inside of Islamism, and particularly radical Islamism, from inside of Islam, Islamism, what, what we see is a, it's those four, four offenses, those four uh, aggressive actions by the West against Islam, against Islam uh, and Islamism. And it's uh, you know, the Crusades. Let's see if I can remember the four. They're, they're in the book. Uh, there's the Crusades. Then, then there's like the 19th century uh, imperialism from the British and the French. The French are in Algeria, the British are everywhere. I don't know, in, in, in Iran, in, in, in Persia, in, uh, in Palestine, right? In, in India, for that matter, which has a, a, a high Muslim uh, minority, a, a large Muslim minority in Pakistan, so, um, in Bangladesh, anyway, it goes on, right? Uh, the Dutch as well in Indonesia, for example, which is also, which is the biggest uh, Muslim country. And so, uh, so we have the Crusades, we have imperialism, 19th century imperialism uh, from, from the West again. <clears throat> Then we have, uh, after you know, the, the, the Second World War, we have the State of Israel and, and, and American and British support Britain being instrumental, I suppose, in the formation of the State of Israel. Uh, Britain and America being involved in, in the State of Israel and supporting the State of Israel on uh, what, what Islamists have to see as, as, as Palestinian territory. <coughs> Uh, and then finally, sort of a recent onslaught, a cultural onslaught from the West, right? Western movies, Western habits, Western customs being sort of uh, appealing to young Muslims and leading uh, young Muslims astray, leading them away from Islam towards promiscuous uh, sex and, uh, you know, uh, slovenly and uh, informal uh, lifestyle with little to no regard for God or religion. Right? So all of these uh, these pressures on Islam, these these offences to Islam, uh, noted, you know, getting specific, right? The stationing of, of U.S. troops, infidel troops, right? U.S. troops in Saudi Arabia, right? That that the, that's home to the the holy sites of, of Islam, uh, Mecca and Medina, two of the most holy sites of Islam. Uh, we have American soldiers trampling the ground that the Prophet Muhammad walked, right? This is an affront to Islam, right? And it's all coming from the West. This, in that last particular case, uh, you know, in, in the guise of American soldiers. So it's all coming from, so in terms of <clears throat> uh, Islamism, radical Islamism, the West is absolutely an enemy, is the, is the problem. If we look at the obstacles, you know, modernity, right? Liberalism, liberal modernity, Enlightenment principles like rationalism and sort of secularism, anti-religious sentiment in the West, um, anti-Islamic uh, sentiment in the West, for that matter, uh, as much as that exists. Um, these things are the obstacles, right? That 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 hinder uh, the establishment of Islamic states, of states that follow Islamic values and Islamic law, the Sharia law. Uh, that, that Islamists would like to, to, to put in place. So, um, with the West being the main perpetrators, the main enemy, the main obstacle to Islamism, um, 
as I said, either in the form of current norms and values from the West or imperialism uh, to the 1960s, probably right from the, from the 19th century, uh, in the form of the State of Israel, in the form of the Crusades going back uh, now almost a thousand years. Um, the West has been the enemy. So, so this is a, is a fairly, um, in that context, right, this question is, is a fairly difficult and important one, I suppose. Will the end of radical Islamism and terrorism come when Islam as a whole is widely reformed? Uh, and that's the thing. So my feeling about that, right, is that you know, there's so many varieties of Islamism, uh, sorry, of Islam. So in terms of Islam as a whole widely reformed, um, I don't think that that's a possibility. Right? Christianity as a whole can't be reformed, right? Uh, of course, there's reformed Christians, there's, there's reformed uh, Jews, right? There's, 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 those people exist already. Um, but it's unlikely that the whole, or even 90% of, of Muslims or Christians or Jews for that matter, will, will uh, sort of adopt a particular interpretation of you know, for Islam, the Quran, right, or, or, or the Old Testament, or something, right? Uh, there won't be, uh, I, I, I can't imagine, right? That's what it seems like that, you know, for Islam as a whole to be widely reformed. Uh, there'll always be differences of opinion, right? And there'll always be some people who are more conservative who, who want to look to the life of the Prophet Muhammad or who want to look, you know, and of course we could do it in Christianity or Judaism as well or Hinduism, right? To look back to the lives of, of holy men who lived before. And who want to emulate that? And who, and who think that that's the right way to live their religion? Right? Fundamentalists, oftentimes, uh, we'll call them. Right? People who are conservative Christians or conservative Jews, uh, Orthodox Jews, right? where, where they, they look back uh, to the foundations of their religion as, as sort of the pure time of their religion. And they see uh, changes and reforms to that as, as perversions or as ad adulterations of the true pure religion. And I think that's that's the that's in all in all religions you have that right, and certainly Islam has has that. Uh, and so, um, in some ways, right, uh, wide 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 scale re reformation of Islam uh, would lead to. Um, would lead to uh, maybe even more of that, right? More uh, accusations of these people are not Islamic enough, these people are not real Muslims, uh, more uh, uh, resentment, right, from, from more conservative um, Muslims. All I can see, I can, uh, as I'm saying that, I can start to see, look, maybe what you're getting at is, look, we had a reformation in Christianity in Europe, um, what we had was liberalism, right? I would argue, right? We had liberalism that came in and, and it sort of decimated uh, religion, sort of pushed religion out of the, uh, the, the public square. Uh, uh, constitutionally in the United States, it, 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 it has, right? Uh, that separation between church and state. And in other parts of the West, you know, where, where perhaps the, the separation of church and state is not as uh, formalized, uh, nevertheless, her, the West is fairly secular, right, in comparison with, um, and so Islamism sees that, and certainly radical Islam, Islamism sees that as a, as a threat, it sees that as where next, right, they've gotten rid of their own religion, right? they've gotten rid of God out of their own societies, their own lives, and now they're going to uh, corrupt our youth, right, and take them the same way, and so I imagine any, any attempts to, to, to go down that route, um, would only lead to uh, a backlash of, of radical Islamists. So that's the first part of the question, or can Islam find a peaceful place in the West? See, I don't think that's an either or. Uh, you know, I guess I come from a country where there are lots of uh, Muslims, mostly of immigrant backgrounds, but, but certainly sort of second and third generations. Uh, and it's certainly not without its problems, absolutely. Uh, there are, uh, you, know, you know, there was, there's been terrorist atrocities carried out uh, by uh, you know people who are British, who were born, whose parents were born in Britain, who who went to British schools and, and grew up in Britain, uh, but were radicalized, uh, maybe self-radicalized, uh, who carried out uh, atrocities 
uh, and of course there are social issues right there's 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 clashes conflicts uh you know between s some people right uh but on the whole on the whole um you know muslims are absolutely have a peaceful place in the west in in in, in, the, in the country that i come from right um And I, and I think when it comes to like their largest backers being fundamentalist states like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Sudan, uh, those are very different countries, obviously. Uh, you know, Saudi Arabia in particular is, is quite friendly with the West, uh, quite friendly with the United States, very close to the United States, also with Britain. Uh, long history of cooperation with Britain in, in uh, security and military affairs. So I'm just trying to sort of pick apart this last, last part of this question. So can Islam find a peaceful place in the West? So it depends what we mean by that. Uh, it, it, like I said, there's lots of Muslims living peacefully in Europe, uh, in Britain. I mentioned Britain because that's where I'm from, but, but in Europe, that's absolutely happening. Uh, though I qualify that by acknowledging that, of course, it's, it's not been without any, uh, any problems or any issues. Um, which maybe is a very high bar, right? To say that we're all going to live together peacefully, um, no matter what our religion or our belief system. Um, you know, that's obviously the the goal in the West, right? In the liberal West, but that's it's not. It's not we don't have a hundred percent success rate, right? And that would be maybe a lot to ask, um, because would we have a hundred percent success rate of people of the same religion living together, right? Uh, no, uh, there's still issues there. So. Um, so I think it can find it, I think it has, and I think it will continue to find a peaceful place in the West. And I think uh, as well, there will be still Islamists and there still will be uh, radical is Islamists <clears throat> um, uh, who will um, want to protect the purity of their religion and of their family, right, and of their, of their community. Uh, and that might lead to conflict and has led to conflict. <clears throat> Um, but then the backers of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Sudan, uh, I read a good paper, and I think this was in, I don't know if, yeah, this must have been in another class. I think uh, I teach it, so this is not my religion class that I'm talking about now. This is not this class, which is political ideologies, but it's another class that, that I teach about sort of a backlash against globalization. I take the case of Islamism as a backlash. Uh, as part of the backlash, I sort of have, uh, here's Trumpism, right? Here's uh, you know, European uh populism okay here's islamism and i sort of compare those that's sgs 303 when i teach it that's what i do uh, but one of the uh, pieces that we read for that are about uh indonesia and we have uh indonesians who are going off to school in saudi arabia and some of them are going off to school in 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 the netherlands uh, and they're coming back and they're bringing the Islam that they're learning in the Netherlands and that they're learning in Saudi Arabia and bringing it back to, uh, back to a country, Indonesia, that's always been uh, sort of fairly um, uh, a special, a special case of Islam, right? Where they've, they've been uh, quite a different uh, practices and, and beliefs than, than uh, what go on in Saudi Arabia or, or in the Netherlands uh, for that matter. So uh, sort of a hybridization or a globalization of Islam, if you like, right? Uh, joining together of sort of different strands and different beliefs within is, is Islam uh, coming, uh, all coming together in, 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 in Indonesia in this case, right? But in other places too. Uh, that's about, about as close as I can get to, 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 to sort of that, that last part about the you know, largest backers, uh, fundamentalist states. Certainly I see what you're saying when you're saying fundamentalist states, in particular the Saudi Arabia and, and Qatar. I don't know as much about Sudan, to be honest with you. I haven't had read a lot about Sudan, but uh, yeah, that's my, that's my answer to that third one. And then finally, for me, says the question, I just have an overall lack of contextual knowledge on Islam. Uh, I understand all that the book posited, good, uh, but I cannot really analyze the assertions of the book. The muddiest point for me is my lack of knowledge on this religion. Uh, I think that's a good place to end, right? I think I also, <laughs> uh, even though I've taught it, that, that class, which, which I did read uh, verses from the Quran, right? I read a few articles and, and the textbook that I was using, I read uh, for that uh, and, and learned a little bit more about Islam. But, um, but I think that 
uh, it's beyond the scope of the of the class to do what you so I think don't worry that you're not able to do what you say you're not able to do you're not it we're sort of going to rely on the textbook here right we're going to rely on them to uh, because <clears throat> If we had a whole semester to study Islam, of course, that wouldn't be enough to, to ground us properly in, in, in the religion, I would say. Um, but, but then the second thing is that this is not, this is not exactly about the religion, right? Uh, we're not sort of trying to decide, is Islam, is Islam like more political than other religions, right? I kind of said at the beginning that I think it, it's, uh, that it's comparable right, with Christianity, or I didn't talk much about Judaism, but of course, uh, Hinduism, right? The Hindu National Party in uh, the BJP in India right now. So uh, certainly religions uh, have a relationship with politics. Uh, all, of, all of them do. Uh, I think Buddhism is the one that has the least of a, of a relationship with politics, but because it has some. <clears throat> uh, and so it's beyond the scope of this class to sort of decide, is Islam more political? Is it more, does it, is it more given to radicalism than other religions? And I think that's not really the point here. Uh, the point is to investigate sort of the reasons and the, and the, the, the what, I suppose, or what is uh, radical Islamism as an ideology, right? And so we looked at, at it, that, that tri, in, in the textbook, we looked at the triadic uh, model of freedom. Uh, we saw the agent, right, is the Muslim, right, the, the Ummah. The, uh, the community of, of Muslims and the, the goal is states for Muslims, Muslim states, uh, Islamic states uh, run along Islamic values and, 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 and law, Sharia law, and that the, uh, the, the obstacles to that are uh, you know, secularism, liberalism, the West, generally Western culture and customs encroaching in the Islamic world, uh, as well as not, not, not just the cultural ones, but as well as maybe military uh, intervention by the West in in the Islamic world uh, generally and in the Middle East and, and, and uh, in particular. <clears throat> so uh, that's the Sotriatic model of freedom. Um, you know, we go through the, the four elements of an ideology, right? the evaluation, the orientation, uh, <clears throat> the explanation and the, the program uh, that, that are in the book there. Um, uh, that's really what we're looking to do. Uh, we're not looking to, to judge and decide whether or not uh, there's something about Islam that makes this more prevalent. Um, um, like I said, there's, a, there's a, enough comparison, I think, with either somebody like uh, Joseph de Mestre or with um, just, you know, conservative political parties uh, in the past or Christian conservative, Christian democratic kind of parties of the past. Um, and probably right with with um, um, the Christian right. Although I suppose here I'm, I'm talking about Islamism rather than sort of terrorism, uh, ter you know, the Islamic fundamentalism that we're sort of describing as those who are going to use violence in order to achieve their political goals, um, and of course that's sort of levels of violence as well. So. That's it. Uh, that's where I'm ending there. I hope that was uh, interesting and insightful. I hope it helped you uh, to uh, maybe appreciate where, where, you know, where to take the reading from the textbook. I hope you certainly will read the textbook because there's much more detail in there. Uh, and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing more questions from you.